All right. Let's go. Hmm. <laughs> Get ready. Ready. Let's do this. All right. I'm ready for this. You seated yourselves and called for a stein of the finest mead. Your partner, Rani, is in a particularly good mood. Quaffing the bar's spirits buoyed your spirits. When things are lively, Rani will recount a certain tale. You were an adventurer, just starting out, and didn't know right from left. It was then that you first met. Shall I open that door for you? The rogue Rani inquired, after appearing from out of nowhere. He thought that it would be a simple matter to take advantage of your naivete and pocket some coin. I got it. Voila! Yes. Simple. What?
Since that point, you've been journeying under mutually beneficial terms. You handle combat, and Rani handles locks. You came to Hydland as an adventurer. Like many of your fellows, you strove to challenge the dangerous labyrinths here. The labyrinths were every bit as perilous as you'd heard. Most were lucky to even have their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I recommend registering. You can get jobs there and learn skills. Clad in full armor, the Guildmaster, Samuel Joseph, stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. He appraises you with a look and dismissively states that only worthless adventurers leave their equipment in disrepair. Your travels thus far have left your equipment positively thrashed. You resolve to rectify that before returning. The Guildmaster directs you to Morgan's Magic Item Shop. The magician is even able to repair magical equipment. To be deemed worthy by the Adventurer's Guild, you must first repair your broken equipment. You conquer a labyrinthine set of stairs, and Morgan Lisley, shopkeeper and witch, welcomes you to her establishment. There is no object's repair which does not fall under her purview, from ornate magic staves to rusted axes. Welcome to my shop. Which one do you want? Adventurers come here not only for repairs, but for appraisals and to purchase magic items. You will visit Morgan often. Your equipment is now unmarred. You should return to the guild and see if the guildmaster deems you worthy. Once again, the Guildmaster Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the Guild Hall, like a statue. With your equipment now in tip-top condition, you request to join the Guild. Samuel issues you a test of skill. What will you do? Your test is to help a warrior named Roland. Samuel says that you can find him in the ancient temple ruins. To prove your metal for the Guildmaster, you head to the ancient temple ruins to assist the warrior, Roland. A magic gate was recently found in the ruins on the outskirts of town. Use that to reach your destination. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple. Some quiescent, some far less so. What? An ancient dragon spoken of in myths 
is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. You liberated a fairy that was trapped in a cage. Oh, I can do that. Let's see. You have made your way to Roland. At the guild's behest, he is looking for adventurers who went missing in the ruins. For you to pass your guild exam, you must help him. Roland tells you to search in the ruins that are submerged in water. Much time has passed since the missing were last seen. He tells you to bring back their bones if they are found dead. You have found the bones of a missing adventurer. Sometimes, the dead have been known to leave behind a message right before they perish. Yeah! 
there seem to be more nests similar to this one spread throughout the area. You exit the area, taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. You return to the guild to report your quest. However, Samuel gives you an additional task. It is possible to resurrect the dead with their bones. He tells you to go to the temple to attempt the resurrection ritual. Canaan Temple is a temple dedicated to the worship of the goddess Althena. Proceed there immediately. You were ordered to attempt to resurrect guild members at Canaan Temple. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. The prayer of the monks sometimes restores the dead to life. The goddess bestows mercy to those whose time has not yet come. What troubles you, my child? Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death and awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is made new. The adventurer pledges their allegiance to you as thanks. Any adventurers you resurrect will wait for you at the inn. You can now fill out your party with those who are waiting at the inn. Please be aware that if you leave an area and one of your party has fallen, they will become lost. If you encounter any bones during your questing, be sure to bring them back and resurrect them so that they can assist you. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. After delivering your report, you think you see part of a smile cross Samuel's face. You are now registered with the Guild. 
you may now get cooperation from guild members. They may participate in your party and help you in completing quests. The Adventurer's Guild has a backlog of quests because many adventurers are occupied with the Dragon's Crown rumors. The King and his retinue left to find the Dragon's Crown and are missing. Many guild members are now searching for them. The existence of this crown that supposedly controls dragons is disputed, but the King was obsessed with finding it. Samuel hurriedly assigns you a new task. You get the feeling that he deems you reliable and trustworthy. It's a request from this country's Prime Minister. The quest's details will be provided at the castle. You wonder about the lives of the powerful people in that grand castle. You happily accept the job. Welcome back. Have a request. You accepted a new request from the guild. You must go to the castle for further details. Which one do you want? Flanked by guards, you are led through the secure castle. Princess Vivian and Prime Minister Gustav awaited you. The Prime Minister speaks a lot, in contrast to the silent princess. He asks you to swear to keep this matter secret. The royal scepter has been stolen. A witness who saw the thief described him as Tomit, a known bandit. Your job is to track down Tomit and retrieve the scepter also, for the sake of the kingdom, this must be kept secret. Rani whispers that he knows of this Tomit. He is well known and is based out of the old capital. You bow and leave the throne room. In order to retrieve the royal scepter, you chase the thief into the ruins of the old capital. These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. Now it is a dangerous place, full of dragons and wyverns.
Be careful. Find the bandit Tomet in a hideout amid the ruins, just as Rani told you. It is said that whatever this man desires, by thievery he can acquire. Rani asks, are you Tomet, the bandit legend? Beaming, he displays his spoils and tells the tale behind each item. When you ask about the scepter, he says, that was indeed I and goes on to boast exactly how he got into the castle. When you inquire further about the scepter, he deduces your true intentions and darts away. Pursue the thief, apprehend him, and reclaim the scepter. You cannot capture a target swimming underwater Watch for your quarry to surface. the sound of a woman crying on the other side. The wall here seems thin enough to break through.
pin down Tommet, who is so stunned that he's actually been caught that he cannot move. Relenting, he produces the scepter from his bag and hands it to you. You have reclaimed the royal scepter, stolen from the treasure room of the castle. You must deliver the royal scepter to the Prime Minister at the castle. Once again, you are led to the throne room under guard. This time, a man stands there with a presumptuous grin. The man tells you to hand over the scepter. You tell him that you don't know what he's talking about. The man's mouth transforms into a twisted grin, and he signals his guards. They inch closer, swords at the ready. What will you do? You fall into a fighting stance. As soon as you steel yourself for battle, the Prime Minister and the Princess burst in. The Prime Minister orders the guards near you to stand down. The man twirls his cape and leaves, as if nothing happened. You sigh, relieved that you didn't have to shed blood in the castle to resolve the problem. The Prime Minister tells you that man was Count Dean, the younger brother of the king. He's trying to usurp the throne. The scepter indicates the throne's heir. The Prime Minister says Dean had Tomit steal it to deny the princess the throne. The Prime Minister takes the scepter and narrows his eyes in satisfaction. He pays you for completing the request. The fairy you saved in the ruins appears before you. She seems to want to take you somewhere. The fairy leads you into an old ivy-covered tower. You find yourself in a cluttered room that seems to be a laboratory. Judging by the stratification of dust, much time has passed since anyone last entered this room. Letters amidst the shambles indicate that a magician named Lucane lives here. You find a message he penned on the desk. Lucane wrote that he was off to see a magician friend named Wallace in the underground labyrinth. The fairy uses various interpretive gestures to indicate that she wants you to find him. You accept her job request. You head to Wallace's underground labyrinth to look for the magician Lucane. 